Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Europa Universalis 4, where we are playing as Lubeck. In the last episode, we spent most of our time basically teching up. We have hit the next uh, institution. We are now in Renaissance. We have also got to two years ahead in all technologies, and we are basically waiting until October so that we can start to integrate Loomberg here. So let's go ahead and just start speeding forwards again. Because there is not a huge amount that we would be able to do in the meantime. Uh, do we want to go ahead of time? Uh, no, I don't really want to spend the extra monarch points, especially because we are admin and I would quite like to... Not admin. Economic. We need the admin points so that we can get the economic ideas. So let's wait on that. Now, who are our rivals again? We have a rivalry with Brunswick. When does the truce run out? Oh, Brunswick we don't have a truce with. It's Verdun that we do. Still ongoing. Mecklenburg, still ongoing. Although it does end this year. And there it is. So, no. We want to wait until Loomberg is ready to be integrated. Then as soon as we start integrating it, we can go to war with somebody. Because you have to be at peace to start the integration process. So, we're just going to wait until October. We could start preparing an army to go after Mecklenburg. Who are they allied to? Bohemia. Bohemia and Saxony? Probably too large. Especially because Saxony actually has a vassal in Thuringia. Um, what about Verdun? Verdun has Brunswick, East Frisia, Lorraine, and Mantua. So taking these two down could be good. Can we take a look at how many troops those guys have got? <laughs> All of their armies are tiny. So we absolutely could take these two down at once. So it would just be East Frisia, Lorraine, and Mantua. Mantua's too far away. I don't think they would really be able to assist. Uh, East Frisia is quite small. And then Lorraine is a bit further away. The Mantua's all the way down there. I don't think Mant Mantua would even get to us. So we could definitely go after Verdun and try to integrate it into our great realm. Treasurer has died. That was the admin guy who was a level one. I'm going to stick with the level 1 because I don't want to pay the extra money. Monopoly company formed. The realm often grants trading companies the exclusive rights to traffic goods in the region in exchange for a lump sum payment and continuing revenues from traders. We've just managed to negotiate one such agreement with a group of Lubeckian entrepreneurs that promises to deliver us a lucrative windfall. So we would gain trade efficiency and diplo for 10 years. Or we get a bunch of cash just straight up. I think I'm going to take the long-term investment. Because as we get more and more control over the Lubeck node, I think we will actually earn more cash. Yeah, relations are still high enough. Good. And we need to get rid of one of these guys. You are currently getting Walgast. You're currently going for Death's Martian. So let's cancel Walgast because Walgast is high enough. And then let's begin integrating. Five a month, so long as... Oh no, we're getting four. Um, which means we're actually going to be losing Diplo power every month. Unless we focus it. I think we kind of have to for this. And when we have another election, we may well try to elect a Diplo person. Haha. <laughs> Speaking of elections, now here's the problem. How much does it cost to re-elect you? It costs eight. And we worked out that we actually generate about five per re-election cycle because of the fact that this guy is righteous. Which actually means we only lose about three Republican tradition, uh, three Republican tradition per re-election. So I think I'm actually going to keep this guy uh, because he would be fairly easy to train up. He is quite young and he also has that plus 0.5 Republican tradition, which is just going to work into that even better. Let's go ahead and mothball you and group you in with the others. All right. And we are... How far ahead? Still two years. 
So in 66, we'll be able to get the ideas. Why has that got a timer now? Oh, maybe you have to do it without a certain amount of time of somebody else getting it. Tech level 6 was first reached in 1465, 1st of January 1465. So yeah, you have got three months after the first. Okay, that I'm pretty sure is new. I don't remember seeing that before. So... Do I want to spend an extra 10% military technology now in order to get two additional innovativeness? Which is going to be the equivalent of 0.2% power costs for the rest of the game. Yes. Especially because of Miltech. Alright, so we are at 6, so we could definitely do quite a lot of damage if we went to war with somebody. And we would still get two. I think I'm going to wait and see when somebody else grabs that, and then we'll get the bonus as well. Verdun's no longer a valid rival for Lubeck. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> that's very annoying. We hesitated just slightly too long, so we're going to have to cancel the embargo. Which we don't have anyway. Ah, uh, it's because the truce ended. Do I still want to go after Verdon? I think I do. So even though we won't get the power projection from that, we would still fight them, which would draw us into war against Brunswick. And Brunswick we would get points from. Now, who's Brunswick allied to? Ah. Saxony, Verdon, Friesland, Stettin, and Lip. So Saxony is probably the strongest of that lot. Verdon, we know. Friesland. Friesland we don't want to take for granted. Because in my Holland test game, Friesland actually completely demolished the Dutch, even though we outnumbered them. Because they are a peasant republic and they start with bonus uh, morale. That's part of their government reform. So, I think we are still going to go after Verdun. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start fabricating on Verdun now. And we're going to plan to take that. We should have burnt through most of our aggressive expansion already. And we have basically all of it. So this is definitely a good time to start expanding. We've begun annexing. We may actually finish annexing before the war on Verdun. We shall see. We're now in May. Still nobody has got this? Nope. I'm kind of amazed that we seem to be as far ahead as we are. Interesting. Very interesting. Now what we could do is spend some military points on boosting Lubeck. Although right now, I think I want to keep the Protect Trade. Yeah. Because I'd like to flip to development. Spend a bunch of development and then flip back to uh, Trade Power. And try and keep the uh, downtime from the Trade Power as short as possible. Are there any other buildings we can build? I don't think so. Yes, we could get a Barracks. Ah, Coastal Defences. So, Coastal Defences are new. And there is actually another new unit type which kind of goes hand in hand with Coastal Defence. And that are Marines. Marines are special in that they cost sailors instead of manpower to maintain. They have a bonus for disembarking, so they can disembark very quickly and they can re-embark very quickly. So, Coastal Defences are basically your defence against Marines. Uh, they are also there to increase the amount of forces required to blockade. So I believe that the general blockade requirement has been reduced by 50% everywhere. So you need to use less ships to blockade more coastline, which means you're going to have more ships available for other operations, which is a great change. And you can basically cancel out that advantage with coastal defences. You do need to do this on a per-province basis. So coastal defences in really expensive provinces, so for example Lubeck, would probably be a really good idea, because it would then mean that they have to use a lot of ships to blockade Lubeck. Also, you don't want people just landing on it. And then the naval uh, battery increases that even further. Furthermore, this will also increase hostile fleet attrition. So any ships, any hostile ships in the region next to it will take attrition if they are present. And I think the hostile fleet attrition, that, is that just always just straight up 5% attrition? Or is that a portion of the number of provinces they're blockading? That I'm not sure about. Maybe they take like 5 damage a month? Not sure. Not sure. So we'll have to see exactly how the naval battery works, um, but it could be potentially very powerful against nations like Britain, who kind of like to sit on the coast and just uh, 
attrition you down. Now you'd be attritioning them in return, which actually makes maritime ideas even more important because you heal in coastal provinces. So whether you out heal the damage you're taking, I don't know. So there's a lot of like new mechanics that are kind of featuring in there, which I do enjoy. And I've been trying to work out actually how one actually gets marines because I haven't seen a way of recruiting them. They are not in the land unit tab. They're not in the naval unit tab. They're not a template. They're not a mercenary. I'm guessing that it's a unit type that becomes available later on. Just like artillery becomes available here. Marines must become available later. Now are they in this list? No. I have no idea when they become available. What's an impressment office? Let's double check that. That might be more sailors. I don't know how one gets marines. Soldiers' households? That's new. Okay, so apparently there are a couple of other buildings which we've not seen. Furnish soldiers' households. Oh, here we go. They've, they've added these. So we've got the naval manufactory, the ramparts, those have always been there. Ramparts basically being a defensive uh, manufactory. I think they've always been there. They give you extra defensiveness and they give you extra attrition. It's basically on top of the regular defenses. Impressment offices, more effective on salt fish, naval supplies, tropical woods, and they give you more sailors. Uh, State House is... I think these are new, actually. State House, more effective on provinces with paper, glass, or gems. They give autonomy and statewide governing costs down. Interesting. So they're like a hyper-powered uh, government building. Oh, and government buildings reduce governing costs. So if you want to have a very wide empire without investing in the governing costs through government reforms or through estates, then you can actually offset some of the cost with the government buildings. That is also new. Then we've got the soldiers' households, which are the same as the sailors, but for manpower. So you can really double down on manpower generation with that. And then the furnaces were definitely there before. So a bunch of these manufactories are definitely new. I don't remember seeing those before. Plus the uh, coastal defences. Interesting. Still doesn't hunt how to get marines. That is still a mystery. Anyway, still nobody has workshop, and we're actually no longer going to be ahead of time now. So... Still always too innovativeness. I'm, I'm still going to wait until that flash is red, or we max this out, and then we can go and grab admin anyway. We no longer pay the penalty, so we've basically saved ourselves 10% already. If I could save myself a further 5%, I'll do it, but that would basically have to be one of our neighbours, I think. And I'm going to need to watch that fairly carefully. So Mecklenburg is offering, or is accepting knowledge sharing from Saxony. That's a good point. Can I offer knowledge sharing to anybody? That is something I should probably have done before. Economy? Offer knowledge sharing. It is. Um, cancel the spy network. And we can offer knowledge sharing to Brandenburg. Brandenburg will then pay us 0.72 ducats a month. Should have done that a while ago. Interesting. Like, it's a good way of earning cash. <laughs> very quickly. And then we can put our diplomat back to work on fabricating a claim on Verdun. And it does kind of look like we're going to finish annexing Lundberg before the war against Verdun begins. Which is going to be good. Oh, what are we at? 973... Almost reached the maximum, yes, I'm aware. We are gaining nine a month. <laughs> I'm min-maxing here a little bit more than I usually do. 991, so we can't afford another month of it. So we are going to have to tech up unless we develop. And we could do that. Developing admin is pretty... 
Lucrative. Pretty valuable. Let's do one. We're just going to keep that ticking over. I think that will be absolutely fine. Three twenty-one plus. Are we going to have to call these? No, I think we just get the calls automatically, don't we? Nope, we are going to have to call them. Or state them. Okay, so we have integrated. When a smaller country gives up its independence to join a greater realm, there is a lot of adapting. And some parts are easy. The administration of the realm will still need to expand to accommodate all possibilities. Integration is a slow process. For 10 years, we are going to have the annex subjects penalty. So until 1476, we basically can't integrate anybody else. If we had modifiers which basically offset the diplomatic reputation penalty then we could uh, some nations like austria can potentially start annexing like two countries at a time but we are not among them we have not taken diplomatic ideas nor do i really intend to okay so verdon we are going to need to spend a bit longer going after you Improve the capital. The glory of our capital has long been neglected. We now have an opportunity to improve the city and make it a beacon of cultural pride. This may prove costly, but there is an alternative solution. So we can pay 500 manpower or 40 ducats. I'm going to pay the manpower because we'll generate that back fairly quickly. And we are also going to make Lower Saxony, which is actually going to include Lauenburg, into a state. This isn't going to cost me much. It will cost me a little of extra cash, but that's fine. And also uses 10 governing capacity. Interesting. Okay, so Lundberg and Sel are now a state. And we could actually set up an edict here. Now, here's a question. Do we want to set up an edict there to develop? So we can go for the economy one. I mean, they're both forests. Which is definitely not the best place to develop. Also, this is a salt producer and a cow producer. Salt is not bad. Lübeck does. Actually, salt is pretty useful. So developing Lundberg would not be awful. Hmm. Wait, I can create that into a trading city? Why? I didn't think I could do that in my own trade node, but apparently I can. Hmm. So trading cities are merchant republics. They will also, I think, automatically join your trade league. However, they do count against your soft cap, which will make it less likely that other nations will join the trade league. And they do take up trade as well. So not necessarily what we want to do. I've never been that impressed by trading cities. Um, right. And if anybody in the comments wants to tell me how to use trading cities properly, please do. Because I'd love to see that. Because right now they seem kind of underwhelming. Or tell me why they're supposed to be good. That would also be nice. Uh, I keep looking over there. It's like, chat will tell me. No, chat won't. There is no chat. The chat is the comments. It's weird, like, pre-recording stuff again. And I'm only doing this because I'm streaming the multiplayer game instead of um, streaming this live, which is what I would usually do. So, what else do we want to do... Verdun is almost ready. It's going to be ready in, what, two months? Still nobody's got admin. This is incredible. And we've hit the limit again. So I think what I... I'm going to do here is change the dev cost... No, I think I'm going to continue investing just a chunk of admin on Lubeck every now and then. Because Lubeck, the higher the uh, development of Lubeck, the more trade power we generate in Lubeck. And therefore the more money that it generates out of the Lubeck trade node. I mean, it's named after us. We, we, we kind of have to make the most out of this, don't we? And Lubeck itself is basically worth 36% of this node. It's kind of crazy. Alright, so we've got the 30% Verdun. Oh, man, you've become friendly towards me. Mistake! So which one do I want to go after? Verdun and State are both grassland. These are going to be very easy to develop. Which is the capital, Verdun. So I think I'm going to make Verdun the claim. We are going to tell you to stop drilling and send you over here so we can instantly attack that province. Now, ships... What are we going to be up against again? Remind me who they are allied to. 
Brunswick, East Frisia, Lorraine and Mantua. So East Frisia is likely to have a navy, but none of the others really. So I think for the moment we will continue to patrol here. And if we see their navy appearing, then we will unmothball these guys and then attack. I think that is quite reasonable. Ah, here we go. So we've got 5% cheaper, so we've actually saved 15%. And we still get the two innovativeness for going ahead of time. Brilliant. Okay, very happy with that. And then we are very, very close to getting bureaucracy, which I think I'm going to go and grab very soon. Uh, Heretico Combreno Act, which is a national tax and missionary strength, no real downside. Make it an illegal offence punishable by burning at the stake to either own or produce a translation of the Holy Bible. I wish that, like, reduced the chance of printing press spawning in your country or something. Because there really is no downside to it. You have a general? You do have a general. But it's Julius Backer. I'm not sure that I necessarily want to use Julius. Also, he's kind of a terrible general. If we recruited one of these, we would have between three and nine pips. So three was the absolute minimum that was possible. This guy is a lot better. Now, I really wish that I could rename you, because I would do that. Like, even on this list, just give me a little rename button. Please. Please. Okay, I think that we are ready. So we're going to go after Verdun. East Frisia says no. Because their ruler is cruel. Interesting. So that's basically their navy out of this. They have 9,000 troops. No, sorry, we have 9,000. They have 30... Do we have 9,000? Oh, 9,000 infantry, 1,000 cavalry. Yeah, that makes more sense. They have 15. We are going to crush three here. East Frisia's forces aren't going to count towards this. They do have a lot more manpower, but that's it. So let's go ahead and just straight up charge in. We're going to drop this to speed 3 so I can actually manage this a little bit better. Oh yeah, of course, Verdun's going to have a navy. Uh, which we could probably attack and then start a blockade Go on. You know what, I think we're going to go ahead and prepare for that. In the meantime, we should yeah come down here and attack. Oh no, they're leaving. Alright, let's see if we can... Start sieging this. Seeing as it is the war goal. They may try to bring in their troops. They are going to have numerical superiority if they bring everybody together. And that is a big if. And if they do, mercenaries, we have lots of money. Oh, speaking of money, we could build some buildings. Uh, let's do that after the war. Once I know for sure that I have enough... Actually, our vassal force limit... Oh, our force limit's gone down since we vassalized. That's interesting. Okay, so we can get an idea, which is going to be bureaucracy. Any reason not to do this? I think so. Do it. Do it now. Oh, yeah. We have Sax Lauenberg coming in to give us a hand. Lovely jubbly. And they're coming to siege down Stad. Okay. We're going to sail out here because these guys are basically trapped. We're not going to be necessarily at full strength, but I don't think we need to be. It's going to be 9 versus 2. We're just going to have such significant fire support, uh, fire superiority. Especially as both of them are just transports. And our light ships have joined the fight as well. Does mean that they're going to require repairs, but eh, it's fine. And there we go. Victory is ours. We actually captured a transport. I don't mind that at all. Fantastic. And the Siege of Verdun has been won. Uh, you've actually taken over Hoya, which is interesting. Now let's go for Brauchschwieg. In fact, I think I'm going to back off and I'm going to let you siege that. You need nine troops, so we need to split off six from here. There's a minimum, so let's grab seven. 
We'll send the three here. Uh, Volmer is actually a siege general, so let's go and put Volmer in this army. And that should be glorious. Okay. Now, are we going to be able to make it to Lorena Mantua? And do we want to? We have an election. We are going to re-elect this guy. Because he's really not costing us an awful lot of Republican tradition. It's quite nice. It's one of the great things about having a righteous ruler. A righteous ruler. I think they're going to go and try and get Hanover... They are. Hanover is forest, so is that. They'll siege down Hoya. That's a 12,000 man army. Um, let's see where they go. They're going to try and siege that back again. Okay. Let the race begin. has been retaken. I'm kind of curious to see if they're going to come and attack us. And in fact, this is Lorraine's army, and I feel like the absolute impudence that they are showing right now bringing Lorraine into this fight means that I really need to go and, you know, stomp all over Lorraine. I think that's only fair, don't you? And you lot may as well mothball again, because I don't think there's a coastline anymore. Here come Mantua's armies. They're going to go and try and siege down Stard, which is fine. And so long as this... Ooh, minus seven. <laughs> Come on, Brauschweig. You're like two ticks ahead of them. You can do this. Boom. Okay, that is one hell of a result. Fantastic. This is still a fort, which means we get the advantage. Go. 6,000 men will probably come in. We are going to be pretty horribly outnumbered here. This might actually have been a mistake, thinking about it. Um, we have the drill. They have another 9,000 coming in, which means they're going to be, what, 15,000 against my 10? We are doing a huge amount of damage to their forces. Our ally is coming in. We have the morale advantage. And there we go. Victory is ours. Eight war score. I'll take that. And Martin Volmer has become ruthless, doing more fire damage. So we can probably peace Brunswick out, which is going to reduce the number of troops that they have in the fight against us. We're definitely humiliating them and demanding money. I think we move into Hoya, take that, and then we'll be able to demand everything. Not going to take us very long. And then we're going to go and siege down Lorraine. We need to make sure that we return to Verdun before we do so. Otherwise, we will be exiled. In fact, our minion is about to get exiled. So we want to take this. Oh, nope, that's 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 the wrong piece deal. That's with everyone. We want to do this one. This time they will accept. So humiliate, money, and also reparations. I forget that's immediate. I always unpause them. It's just muscle memory. Click accept, pause, unpause. Don't need to do the pause, unpause anymore. All right, so next up, we need to go for Lorraine. Which is down, whoops, here. And doesn't actually have a proper fort. Mantua does, and Mantua, from what I remember, is actually a bit of a tough nut to crack. Am I not able to get there? Oh, this doesn't count as a HRE thing anymore, I guess. Well, in that case, we just need to peace out Verdon. So we want to vassalize them. We're not going to be able to do that. Interesting. Um, okay. We'll see if they try to get the military access required to get to us. Is that because it's HRE? Because usually you can move fairly openly through the HRE. Lorraine is HRE. So is Mantua. I don't know why I can't get to Lorraine. Oh, maybe it's only if the Emperor? No. How would they have gotten to me otherwise? To finish my thought there, maybe it's only if the Emperor is in the war. 
Um, well, we would get access through Hess. We can get it through Mainz, and then we can get it through the Palatinate. No, but we wouldn't get it through Brunswick. Can we at least walk through Brunswick still? We can. So we can get through Hess and Brunswick, but we can't go any further. Bribes are growing more accepted. What is the difference between an honest man and a fool? The fool doesn't know he's being swindled. Gain some corruption, unfortunately. Oh, we now have access there. Ah, here we go. Now we have access. We just needed for them to, uh, you know, prepare the military access agreements, which would allow us to carve our way through. Castile has announced Austria as a new rival. They've got the Iberian Reading, Iberian Wedding with Aragon. Um, I'm going to stop building up the spy network, and I'm going to start boosting allies again with both of them. Rudolf of Austria has been elected. The Emperor has enacted a, an imperial reform. The Emperor decided to go through the reform absolute Reichstabilität. The reform is following effect. Safeguard the stability of the Empire by securing the means for its expansion. Empire provinces get state maintenance minus 25%. Oh, cool. Which actually makes it cheaper. And then France immediately rivals Austria. This is unacceptable, they said. Oof, minus two. Thankfully, we outnumber them. I'm actually surprised that we're doing as well as we are. Oh, it's because we're a tech ahead. That's why. Lubeck gets supporting the Florentine school. Because of our relative notability, we're in a position to support the Italian artists in the Florentine school. Being perceived as patrons of international art will definitely help our propaganda efforts. So this will boost our prestige per year. Um, I see no reason not to do this. Having a positive prestige generation is really good for us. And two of forces are here too. Interesting. And here comes Sax Lauenberg. Hi, guys. Ooh, Venice. <laughs> What's going on here? Venetian road noble rebels. Are they about to become a kingdom? They might be. Ouch. And on that note, we shall have to end this episode. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying it. If you are, be sure to hit that follow button to get... No, subscribe button. This is YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so that you get notifications when the next episode comes out. If you're really enjoying this, then do consider checking out the Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash mordredviking. If you want to see me live, that is the place where I am usually doing this, uh, which is over at twitch.tv slash mordredviking. That is my favorite platform these days. Usually what I do is I live stream on Twitch and then chop up the footage and put it here on YouTube. YouTube is really more of an archive these days. So if you want the live interaction, you want to talk to me in real time, ask questions and all that stuff, Twitch is definitely the place to do it. It. Speaking of Twitch, I will be on Twitch later this evening at 6 p.m. British summertime doing a multiplayer game of Europa Universalis 4. There are like 30 odd creators all taking part. I'm currently playing as Holland, um, still surviving, and that is going to be this evening, Sunday, the 7th of June, kicking off at 6 p.m. British summertime. Uh, it is the last session of that creator multiplayer, so I really do hope you will join us because I can almost guarantee you that madness will occur. Um, People like to go out in a bang on those things. Um, so it would be great to see you there. So please do come join us. Uh, I do also have a Discord, which is where the community hangs out. They're a very cool bunch. And it's always a real pleasure to see some new faces there. So please do come join us. You can find a link to all of this stuff in the description below. Thanks everyone for watching. I will catch you next time. Until then, goodbye.